When in doubt, talk it out. Here, to the gate. The game is gate passing. Here, we're developing players' passing and communication skills. Use cones to set up a rectangular grid and place pairs of cones arm's length apart randomly throughout the space. These are your gates. Divide your players into pairs, each with a ball. Here's how it looks. Ready and begin. Let's go. Pairs dribble around the grid, trying to score as many goals as they can by passing to each other through the gates until you call time. Keep it basic. Done well, it might look like this. Players working together to move fluidly from one gate to the next. If done not so well, you'll know it when you see it. And by the way, that's okay. Practice makes progress. Coaches, encourage players to tell their teammate where they plan to go next and to head there after passing, while receivers direct their first touch towards their target. Remember, pass and move. Soft touches, work as a team. Simple passes, coaching bliss. Two, one, one, go! Two, four, six, eight. What do we appreciate? This game, which we call numbers passing. Here, we're working on passing and receiving skills, teamwork, and communication. You'll need four cones to mark your space. Then, assign each of your players a number. This is their passing order. Jackson, six. Xavier, seven. Here's how it looks. On your call, players jog around the space, passing the ball from one player to the next in numbered order. And ready? One finds two. Player one passes to two, two passes to three, and so on until the last number receives it and passes the ball back to one restarting the cycle. Where's six? Good. Find seven. Good job. Keep it moving. Hey, and we're back to one. Good. Once players get into a rhythm, up the ante and add a second ball. Encourage them to talk and move so they can set up their teammates. Nicely done. You can also add a goal and a rule that at the end of each cycle, the last player tries to score, then becomes the new number one. Each player then shifts their number down so someone new gets to score each cycle. Take a shot. Good job, nice. three. Don't worry if players forget to jog between passes. Just remind them to keep moving, which keeps this exercise dynamic and more closely mimics the actual game. Coaches, done well, the ball should never stop moving. When they're receiving, encourage players to position themselves to see as many players as possible, opened up, with their back to the edges of your grid. And remind them to cushion the ball as it arrives to receive it softly, then take their next touch to pass to their teammate. Remember, Keep moving. Open to your teammates. Cushion the ball when receiving. They're all number one in our eyes. Let's play with some Catalan Elan. This is Barcelona. A small-sided game is a kind of scrimmage focused on developing a specific skill. In this case, it's passing, and it's inspired by one of the world's best teams. Barcelona's famous style of teamwork, often called tiki-taka, uses short one-touch passes to maintain possession. Use four cones to create a rectangular grid with a goal or pair of cones on each end line. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies. You can play 3v3, 4v4, or more. And if you have an odd number, you can make one player all-time offense. Here, we're playing 4v4. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage without goalies. Players score by kicking the ball into the goal or between the cones, below knee height. But here's the twist. Players score based on how many passes the team completes before scoring a goal. like this. If a team completes eight passes before scoring, they get eight points. But if they miss the goal, sorry, no points. There are no corners or throw-ins, and if a ball goes out of bounds, it's a kick-in. Play short rounds. The team with the most points at the end wins the round. 21! Great job, girls! Coaches, this is meant to be fun. Give your team room to play and hold the feedback for the end, or use this opportunity to observe. Sometimes the best coaching insights come from simply watching your players in action. Remember, tight passes, work as a team, take the shot. Ain't no party like a tiki-taka party. Why should rectangles have all the fun? We're mixing it up in Triangle Goal Game. Here, we're working on passing and communication skills. Hey, look at the gate. Use four cones to create a rectangular space and use cones to place six-foot triangles randomly throughout your space. 
Divide your players into pairs. You'll need at least as many triangles as you have pairs. Give every pair a ball. Here's how it looks. Pairs move around the space, trying to score goals by passing the ball to one another through a triangle, just like that. There we go. There we go. Game realistic. Keep moving, keep moving. After each goal, they move on to a new triangle and continue scoring until you call time. Three, two, one, and time. Good job, boys. Play short rounds, about a minute or two each. Encourage players to keep track of their goals, then try to beat their own score the next round. Some players may hit the ball too short or too far. Others may stop the ball to take aim. The more practice they get, the more fluid this game will become. It's as much about teamwork as it is about passing. We want players finding and moving towards their next goal right after they pass and letting their teammate know where they're headed. Coaches, when players receive a pass, encourage them to take their first touch towards their next target. Bonus points to pairs who communicate well. Literally, they'll score more. Good pass. Remember, work as a team, communicate, pass to score. Please don't pass on this game. Here's a way to get the upper hand, er, foot. It's called 3v2 to goal. This game helps players learn to use an extra attacker to their advantage. Create a rectangular grid with a goal or pair of cones on one end. Divide players into two teams, one in pennies, starting on opposite end lines. Here's how it looks. Play! Three attackers initiate play from their end line and are met by two defenders who enter from the goal end. The attackers work together to try to score. Nice shot, Caroline! If defenders intercept the ball, they can score by dribbling the ball over the end line. When a player scores or the ball goes out of bounds, new players rotate in and a new round begins. Switch! We want the attackers to spread out, not bunch together. Tell players to imagine an open hand instead of a closed fist. This gives attackers more options with the ball when they're under pressure. Encourage attackers to dribble at the defenders, like this, to force the defender to commit to the ball and open up space to pass around them. Ooh, just like that. Coaches, these girls are really good. If you're doing this with younger or less experienced players, it might look a lot messier. Don't lose heart, that's why you practice. Remember, spread out, dribble at the defender, attack as a team. Simple soccer math. 3v2 equals one goal. What do you get when you cross keep away with an iconic Spanish soccer club? This is Rondo 5v2. Yes, the game you thought you invented at recess was actually developed by FC Barcelona, and it helps players develop their passing and teamwork skills. Create a square with your cones. Arrange your players in a circle just inside your cones with five attackers on the outside and two defenders in the center. Give your defenders pennies to hold, not to wear, since players will trade positions often. Shifting and moving the whole time. Let's go. Play. Here's how it looks. It's classic monkey in the middle. The attackers pass around or between the defenders who try to win the ball. The idea is quick, controlled touches. The more, the better, but if a pass goes out of bounds or is intercepted, the attacker who last touched it swaps places with a defender. The best players in the world train with this game because it mimics what happens on the field, passing in tight spaces, quick thinking, and cooperation. Keep track of consecutive passes and try to top that number as a team each round. Play. One, two, three. Oh, I love it. Coaches, encourage your attackers to draw defenders in before passing. Defenders, meanwhile, should avoid lunging in for the ball. Remind them to stay balanced and communicate with their partner. <laughs> Remember, controlled touches, short passes, cooperation. You'll be coaching Barcelona in no time, or not. If one goal is never enough, we've got the game for you. This is Five Goal Game. Here we're working on attacking skills and finding a new attacking path when the one you're on gets blocked. Use four cones to create a rectangular grid and use pairs of cones placed arm's length apart to create a goal in each corner, plus a fifth goal in the center. Divide players into two teams, one in pennies. 
Here's how it looks. Each side sends in an equal number of players. You can play 3v3 or 4v4. Here we go. You play in the ball and whoever gets to it first is on the attack. Players try to pass the ball through any goal to a teammate to score. Doesn't matter which direction, as long as it finds a receiver. That goes for the goal in the center too. This makes it extra tricky for the defending team. They have five different goals to protect and the only way to gain possession of the ball is to intercept or steal it. The attackers, meanwhile, have to adapt quickly to pressure by changing the goal they look to attack. If turnovers aren't happening naturally, play short rounds and switch roles to ensure all players get turns attacking and defending. Coaches, teamwork is key here. Remind attackers without the ball to keep moving. We want them finding open space near a goal so their teammate can find them to pass or score. Remember, pass to score, find open space, find a new path. Now you know what every goalie's worst nightmare looks like. This game is too hot to handle. It's called Hotbox. In this small-sided game, we're helping players learn to switch the point of attack by putting a big ol' obstacle in their way. Use four cones to create a rectangular grid with a goal or pair of cones on each end line. Then use four more cones to create a square in the center of your grid, also known as the hot box. Divide players into teams of three, four, or more. Here, we're playing 4v4. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage without goalies. Players score by kicking the ball into the goal or between the cones below knee height. There are no corners or throw-ins, and if a ball goes out of bounds, it's a kick-in. There's just one hitch. Players can't enter the hot box. Only balls can pass through. What does this mean? Attackers with the ball may find their path blocked by defenders with a touchline on one side and the hot box on the other, giving them less room to maneuver. The solution? Switch the point of attack by sending the ball to a teammate. Play five-minute rounds. The team with the most goals wins the round. Coaches, this is a great time to reinforce techniques you've introduced during practice, like small group attacking. But don't overcoach. The rules of the scrimmage naturally push players to solve problems on their own in a fun way. Remember, heads up, find a teammate, keep out of the hot box. Seriously, is it getting hot in here? It takes two to tango and six to play. This is 2v2v2, keep away. Here, we're working on passing, receiving, and transitioning quickly from attacking to defending. Create a square space with your cones for every six players. Divide them into three pairs in different colored pennies if you have them. So it's the white group, the purple group, and the yellow group. What we're going to be doing now is two versus two versus two. Two pairs are attackers, one pair defends. Here's how it looks. The attacking pairs play keep away from the defending pair. The goal is to keep possession of the ball for as long as possible. What could go wrong? Oh right, the defenders. Their goal is to steal the ball or force a mistake. Purple yellow, ooh, good defending. When they do, they replace the attacking duo that last touched the ball. But the game doesn't stop during these transitions, so the new defenders and attackers need to get into position ASAP. Move the ball, spread the field, guys. Open up, open up, open up, open up. This mimics the quick transitions that happen in the actual game. Encourage players to look at their passing options before they take a first touch and receive the ball. We want players to be strategic and pass quickly. Slow passes are easier to steal. You can add a rule to limit touches to two or even one to make it more challenging. Coaches, we want attackers positioning themselves to the side of the player with the ball so they can easily receive a pass. Defenders, meanwhile, should be talking constantly, determining who is pressuring the ball and who is offering support. Remember, quick transitions, look at passing options, maintain possession, expect some controlled chaos, emphasis on chaos. Sharing is caring, except when it comes to ball possession. This is 3v3 plus one keep away. Here, players are working on ball control and passing while working as a team to maintain possession. It may look simple, but even the pros practice with this game because it mimics the fast pace and kinds of situations players encounter on the field. Set up a square of cones for every seven players. 
Divide players into two teams of three, one in pennies. The seventh player is neutral or all-time offense, which means they help the team in possession of the ball at any given time. Here's how it looks. Attackers try to rack up as many passes in a row as they can without losing possession to the opposing team. In other words, they play keep away. Defenders, meanwhile, can intercept or steal the ball, at which point the neutral player shifts allegiance and helps them keep it away from the other team. If the ball goes out of bounds, it's a turnover. After about a minute, half teams switch roles and play again. You may see attackers crowding towards the ball, like that. We're looking for this. Spreading out with their hips open to the playing space to find their teammates while talking and working together to create more passing options. Coaches, defenders can learn a lot here too. Encourage them to double up to apply pressure to the ball while the third defender tries to block passing angles. Remember, spread out, hips open, work as a team. You won't be able to keep your team away from Three, this game. Two, one,